All right, YouTube. Uh, you can see I clearly have uh, some sort of issue going on here, and I think it's probably uh, the alternator showing that it's real low on the voltage. So I'll show you uh, my way that I test if the alternator is uh, if the alternator is going out. So the vehicle's running. Um, pop the hood, disconnect the battery, and if the truck dies out and stalls, then um, it's an indicator that the alternator is not putting out power and means that the alternator is bad and needs to be replaced. So let's pop the hood and disconnect the battery and see what happens. All right, so we got the hood up and I'm going to uh, disconnect the positive lead on the battery. Oh, there we go. So that right there tells me that the uh, all native junk needs to be replaced. So let's uh, let's do that. Let's get that done. So there's the culprit right, right there. YouTube, I got the old one out. There's one bolt here, one bolt here. You got a weather pack connector that just plugs in onto the top, and uh, one bolt here. And these are these bolts are all 15 millimeter, and I've also got a really hard to see but way in there that little shiny piece right there that's the uh, adjuster pulley and that's a 15 millimeter as well and when you push down on this lever it just changes the it takes the tension off it so now I'm over at the workbench and one of the first things you want to do is, is obviously make sure that they line up make sure that these ears line up to the new ear and you know same thing down here that your pulleys are the same and that your connections are the same. You can see that that's where the weather pack goes on the new one. That's for the old one. And on the back, the electrical connections are all the same. So it appears to be the same. And listen to this. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's... Hear that little clicking? So that just further confirms that uh, the alternator was getting ready to give up the ghost. So let's uh, get this new one on and uh, see how it works and see if we still have an indicator light. Alright YouTube, we got the new alternator installed in it. Hood's down, everything's back together and let's see if it fixed it. Well, we can see that it's definitely charging better than it was. The check engine light's out, and you can see that we're definitely charging. Uh, if you noticed it before, it was right around this like first line right here before the first big line. So, um, yeah, I think we fixed it. So, I'm pretty excited about it. So, now let me uh, give you an idea and just show you some of the tools right, that I used. Out. So, I just want to show you some of the tools I used. Um, obviously just a 3 8 socket set. Uh, I used 15 and 11 uh, for the bolt. I used 11 for the bolts that go into here and I'm sorry I used 15 for the bolts that go through here and I used 11 mil millimeter for that. Um, battery wrench, nothing fancy, it's just a KD tool uh, made for GM side terminals. 15 millimeter wrench also for those just in case I needed it um, and this tool right here for the for the adjuster for the serpentine belt this is uh, I don't know who makes this might be KD I don't know but you can just put a 3 8 socket on there and turn the nut um, the only other tool that probably most everybody has that I used uh, that's an aluminum pry bar and what happens is is that it's real tough the uh, bracket that's attached to the vehicle sometimes it's real tough getting those out because uh, when you tighten the bolt it sandwiches a sleeve that squeezes kind of against here and the sleeve is steel being pressed through metal so it kind of tends to rust and just there's a little bit of problems here so I use the pry bar just to get underneath it and just kind of pry it out of those tangs a little bit and it popped right out but a little more than you know I really don't like prying or bending with my wrenches because of 
you know, with the four. So, um, yeah, I just needed this. It doesn't have to be this big, but it's what I had. So, oh, and never seize. I'm a big believer in when I take something apart, um, it always goes back together with never seize, unless it needs, uh, unless it needs thread locker or something like that. Um, if I'm taking it apart, especially in the snow belt state of Maine, it's going to rot. So, um, you know, I've gone to the effort to take it apart, then I go to the little bit of extra effort and putting on uh, anti-seize on it. And that way, if I ever got to take it apart again, I know it's going to be that much easier. So I just wanted to go, kind of go over those things with you that I, that I used and that I did. And thank you for watching it.